What's up, family? Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league from the MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting props and futures head to bet online today or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet use our promo code believe 50 b l e a v 50 to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online where the game starts who's a proud sponsor of the boss man show on your radio Folks, back on the Boss Man Show, friend of the show, brother in Christ, brother in general, from All Access Network, Uprise Athletics. He's got MTEs, he's coaching, he's at the gyms, he's broadcasting ESPN, he's doing everything. It's my man out there in Colorado, where it's probably cold as can be, <laughs> Brian Burton. What's up, brother? <laughs> Uh, what's up, homie? Uh, I appreciate the intro. It, it's not too cold yet. It's, you know, the thing about Colorado that's interesting is the weather changes its mind all the time. So you never really know. Uh, the morning can feel like it's in the 40s. The next thing you know, middle of the day is 85, and then at night it's cool again. Then it may be 100. I think it was 102 days last week or three days last week or close to it. And then they actually canceled school. Get this. So the schools out here, a lot of them don't have AC. Wow. Imagine that. They don't have AC. So they literally canceled school, the high schools in one of the districts around here because they didn't have they didn't have AC and it was too hot. So and then two days later it was 50 degrees. So that's that's Colorado for you. Wow. See, this morning in Atlanta is foggy in the 50s. Right. How today is 77, which is rare here this time of year. <laughs> hey, that, that ain't too bad. That's some good weather right there. But see, I love it hot, hot and hotter. That's oh, my that's, that's, that's how you roll. Yeah, I like it hot as can be. Now I don't, I don't, I don't want devil hot. If you know that, I don't, I don't, yeah. want, to, I don't want devil hot or Satan hot. But I like it hot. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, I was, yeah, I've experienced plenty of hot days from 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 my Texas my Texas roots. But it gets hot here. It's a different kind of hot though. So it's like a, it's like a. This is the way I describe it. It's like. The way you see back in the day, the science experiments when you had a magnifying glass and like you just keep staring at that one spot for a long period of time. And then all of a sudden you start seeing some smoke come up. <laughs> That's what it feels like up here because of the elevation. But you can find shade and it's cool in the shade. It's not like um, in Texas, it's just hot period. It's like a fog is over you and you can't shake it. It don't matter if you're in the shade, in the sun, if you're in the groceries. And every place is freezing inside because it's so hot outside. So you got to almost have a jacket or a hoodie just in case because it's freezing everywhere because everybody's trying to balance it out. Whereas no here, doubt. here, if you're in the sun, you might get cooked. But if you're not, you you, you might be all right. And the, and the mornings and evenings are always, always dope. I feel that, man. Yeah, like I call Texas like that dry, dry but wet heat. Here is just wet heat. <laughs> <laughs> here is just lemon pepper wet heat here in Atlanta. So it's a little <laughs> bit different. This is kind of that dry rub heat. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, man, man. it's crazy out there, man. But how's life been, man? Are you and the family and the kids? How's life going for you, my brother? Yeah, all is good, man. Uh transitioning one year into one year into home. I think, yeah, my first episode with you, I was living in my 
in-laws basement during the pandemic. So we have moved into our own home. I think second episode, I might've been in, in the home. So we've been a year in the home, uh, which has been an amazing blessing. We have, uh, my daughter, my oldest is in kindergarten. Uh, my other two are also in their learning centers and all that good stuff. So just getting settled in. So it's been dope. Uh, on that side and then uh from a business side i mean you said something from the beginning uh that part is just continuing to grow and be a blessing and uh yeah my wife is she's happy with me because we're living in the same place <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're not moving around and we're probably not in uh you know we were in my in-laws place for a year almost and a half year and three months and then we we're at my mom's and i was long distance so seven cities in our first three years of marriage we're now one full year in our home not in somebody else's here. So we're 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 trending up right now. We're trending up. You're moving on up through the east we side. Yeah. <laughs> you like Georgia the Weezy. We like Georgia Weezy. Jesus of the pie. I feel that. I feel that, man. Yeah, because I can only imagine. I, I know how it is on my end trying to just date somebody and you know, schedule I keep. So I can only imagine being married with children, how that even a a bigger uh Thing to try to navigate, tiptoe around. So I can only imagine that the wife is happy. Just we all know, we got, we happy got a, wife, happy happy life. Pretty, we, got, we got a pretty good flow. It's definitely happy wife, happy life. She just landed um, from California, seeing her, who you interviewed, her twin sister, uh, Nikki Cannon, at the new head coach at for volleyball at UC Riverside. She just went to their tournament this weekend. And do the twin thing, you know, they had to do that. She took my oldest. And uh, so during volleyball season, it's a lot of one on three. It's a lot of me in transition, like trying to hope I can make him shoot a jump shot. You know what I mean? Like bluff and recover, try to figure it all out. It's a lot of that because she's gone or she's doing her thing in season. Uh, her volleyball team, she coached at a high school here, along with she runs the upright side of volleyball. So they just beat the number one team in the state and the number five team in the state in opening weekend. So they got a chance to to do some things. So that's fun and. Uh, yeah, the dad role. We were we were kind of just talking about this before we started, man. That's the most of all the titles. We have multiple businesses and all that fun stuff, and we're growing it, and that, that's exciting. But the father role and the husband role is the most important, you know. So for me, uh, I grew up in a home that was phenomenal in love for us, but the love for each other was not. So it affected us in its own ways. And my parents are phenomenal. I say it to this day, but that was probably the hardest thing about my childhood was feeling like not knowing what that looked like inside my home because there was always this tension and the arguments and they end up getting divorced. So I think the way I look at fatherhood, the way I look at parenting is uh, just super intentional just to be different and and make sure we can change some of those cycles. You know what I mean? And my parents, they get along great now and they're not together, but at that time it was, uh, it was, it was, it had its moments for sure. Well, so man, you have similar backgrounds because you know my pops and my mom's mom dukes never were together. So I, I came mm. into it on, on separate accord. So I lay in shit with mom dukes, I lay in shit with pops. It's not a same yep. relationship I have. It's, it's two separate, separate ones. And to this day, in, in their advanced age, they hate, they hate each other's guts. So <laughs> and you and you know it. And they, and they live seven houses apart, brother. That's what's so funny about it. How about that? Seven about houses that? apart. That's what's the crazy thing about it. <laughs> so I say both advanced aged individuals and had that same callous intense for one like, yeah, let it go. I'm almost 40 now, so can right, we let it right, right. Can we let it go? Like I love you both the same, but it's like bro, at graduation, it was who who am I gonna hug first? That's mm. that was that was the big battle of graduation. Tricky. See, senior day. Who am I gonna communicate with first? <laughs> Tricky. You know, what, you know how senior day is had both parents out there. You know, my hate was, it was like they had that was awkward. <laughs> right, right, right. Senior day was awkward, brother. I'll put it like that. <laughs> senior day. Yeah, we tried, we, we, try to, we try to avoid all those awkward moments now. I, I definitely can relate. I definitely yeah. can relate. Yeah, so you know, like I said, thank you for sending my father, uh, uh, Pops, a video uh, chat for his birthday. He enjoyed it. He loves you. He still calls you the all yeah. access brother. That's what he calls you. The all yeah. access brother. <laughs> I like the all access brother. That's what he calls you. The all access brother. I like you. 
Yeah, I appreciate it, Pops. Uh, yeah, the first time we talked yeah, on the phone, you were uh, hanging out with Pop. I think it might have been his birthday then. Yeah, it, yeah, was. it was. It was. First time we talked. So, yeah, I uh, I got my, nothing but love and respect for Pops as a as a fellow coach to coach. You know, we got that vibe anyway. So, uh, much, much much love and happy birthday again. No doubt. My brother, she's mad uh, for you. Um, how was it hosting the MCE last year? How fun was that? Yeah, great question, man. Uh, I don't actually know if I've really been asked that question. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It's kind of one of those things that I never saw myself doing, like a lot of things that's happening now in my in my world. Um, but um, yeah, I think you know when you're on the other side and you you are in those events, it's like a lot of things. You have a perspective of what you wish could be a certain way at certain events, or you appreciate about this event. So I think the cool part was being on the other side and knowing how hard those jobs are that those guys have and then just knowing my experiences and trying to do our best to uh, to put it together where everybody could have a great experience. So the best part about it probably, too, was that my wife actually told me afterwards, she's like, you know, you really did that. Like, there was no, like, I thought there was going to be something along the way that was going to be like, you know, maybe a bump in the road or like, Something that didn't go as smooth, but like you really put put that together. I'm like, first of all, we, but uh, you know, I did a lot of it because basketball was more my lane. But uh, yeah, it was pretty amazing. We had a great turnout, um, great turn of events as far as like everything going smooth and great feedback from the coaches. And uh, yeah, that's all you can really ask for, man. I I don't know how many more times we'll do MTEs. We're kind of shifting a little bit more into the youth sports space. We did a uh, three on three league this summer where we had 72 teams in three months over 800 games were played which was incredible and then we got to employ the local college guys and even some high school athletes to come and be referees so it could be a community feel and vibe so I love that uh, and then we have our first very first um, high school preseason showcase that we're putting on October 1st just working and kind of, you know, we want to leave things better than what we found it. That's who we are. That's that's what we believe in with Uprise. And um, my wife and I kind of created this company where we're doing consulting events and development. And we want to be able to give back in as many ways we can through the games we love. So this particular event from where I'm from in Texas and where you are in Atlanta, these things happen all the time because people are trying to play and compete and coaches are recruiting and in Colorado, there's basically team camps in the summer and they have some fall league, but there's no events where the state kind of gets together or parts of the state get together to compete and get ready for the season. And the thing about that's different in Texas, high school coaches can't coach their players at these events, whereas in Colorado, you can actually coach your team. So you can show up as the coach with your team with no restrictions. So yeah, we're going to do our best to, to to put our best foot forward on that. We got some exciting uh, stuff planned around that, and then, yeah, just keep building, man, and keep figuring out how to give back to the community and touch basketball and volleyball in as many ways we, we can. We got the media side, we got this other side over here with Uprise, so we're we're just looking to keep uh, growing and making some positive impacts and adding value to other people. That's what it's all about. Now, have you got your daughters hitting the ball yet? Doing. To, are they are they out there hitting yeah, the ball yet with, 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 with your wife? So there's like a little. And I'm glad you 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 you're a smart man. You know how to preface that because uh, volleyball is the priority. I just let that be the thing, and whatever they gravitate to, they gravitate to. But they have been in some camps with mom uh, this last uh, off season, so that was cool. They got a chance to experience that, and then of course my oldest just went to that volleyball tournament at UC Riverside. So she's been able to see some up close. And then we went to see mom. I think I sent you the video. We we're at, you know, I got one climbing on my back. I got one in my lap and one on my arm trying to climb on, uh, watching volleyball games. It's definitely tricky with three in the stands. But, um, yeah, they love they love, they love, love sports, period. I think the cool part for me, basketball-wise, they've never I've never done anything with them other than, like, the little tight goal outside or in, in the basement. But I, I don't try to do a lot. I just try to let them have fun with it. And when they bring it to me, we, we do it, but uh, they've been in the gym with me to see me, you know, train and teach and coach, which has been fun. Uh, but the funny thing now is they're in this, this little space with movies. They, there's different movies that kind of stick and they just want to keep watching them. And it has been a while that something stuck like that. Like Encanto was like that. Sing two was like that. Moana was like that for like a good year and a half. 
Um, there's been some movies like that. Right now, it's Space Jam. Space Jam 1 and Space Jam 2, every single day, they want to watch Space Jam. So, And I never even introduced it to them, I don't think. Maybe, maybe one day uh, I may have put it on, and then the, ever since then, it's been a wrap. So who knows what sport they play? I don't even necessarily care, but they're they're better athletes than I was already, I can tell you that, from their mom. So that's a good thing. So you're giving them a choice. I had no choice, see. B, I was – You put, you a, put the big skin in your hand. Three years old, running routes with, with Pops. I'm That's hitting dope. with a Fisher-Price bat, trying to hit left-handed and right-handed. Okay, I got a glove in my hand filled in with wiffle balls, okay? <laughs> and I'm shooting the ball right. on my Fisher-Price six-foot goal in, in my bedroom. I had no options. <laughs> no, no choices. None. <laughs> It was. This is what you're doing. Hey, it, worked, the, it worked out. It worked out. It worked that well for you. It did. It did. It did. It did. Like I remember sitting on his lap as a young dude, him having me draw plays with him. X X O. Hey, you, you playing Madden? Redraw the play for me that you see on Madden. Like, right. That's what he had me do. Yeah, so yeah, I think all my I think I think all my X and O knowledge for football definitely comes from Madden. All my knowledge about football comes from playing Madden, whether it's defense, offense, all of it comes from that. Yeah, so he still is day, brother. He has the yellow pad. He's yesterday. He told me he charted some plays watching the Falcons. The Falcons. I'm like, you did yeah. what? <laughs> he yeah. charted, you charted plays. <laughs> So I'm gonna show you when I see you. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you day when I see you. Like okay, <laughs> so that's what this yeah, man still does. Leave. Yeah, it doesn't leave. It doesn't leave. It's like Gatorade is in them. Yeah, like man, like I just want to come over and chill and just relax. Review Get this, son. Look, look at this. Look at look at this. Look. I said, yeah, Dad, that's inside zone. I know. <laughs> I, I know that. I know there's power and a count a counter trap. I know all this, Dad. But he'll he'll quiz me. He'll quiz me. I'll come up. He quizzing me. I love it. Now, when, when you play, was he was he doing all that? When you play, was he was of he course. Having, after the game giving you, the, giving you the rundown? Yeah, well, he took notes of. Well, really, it was trash trash from my quarterback. But still, <laughs> uh, he should have threw you the ball. Yeah, you was open on, on that dig round. I said, I know, I, I know, I, I, I'm aware. I, I, I trust me. Uh, it's, it's been made. A, I made a point to let that be known. <laughs> I was in the zone open, and you threw it over there. It got it picked off. I know. Yes. Hey, he been in the stands, trashing my quarterback. Okay. <laughs> I got. I got to steal one question for you. Uh, recently, I, of course, I read the article uh, that that uh, that they wrote on you here recently. I think it was last year. Yeah. And of course, you've been in media now for a long period of time. I'm a newbie in this media space, uh, but obviously, you know, media is media, but being a black man in media or a black person in media is has its own challenges. So what would you say some of the things you would celebrate about your, I read the article, which was great, and telling your story and the grind. People think it's easy. People get on the boss man show or they see you uh, on, on social or the internet and they think like, oh, I want to do that. And they might think it's easy, but what what, what things are you probably most proud of uh, in your journey for, for getting to where you are? I hate to say this, brother. I had, nobody, to flip, I had to flip it on you for a minute. I had to flip it on you. I, I, I hate, hate, hate to say it, but nobody nobody helped me out. I mm. did this on my own. Mm. Then I reached out to those who were in positions for help when I was a nobody. And now I see them at games and stuff. They want to come talk to me. When they, and, they, and they like to say, I put this person on. Every connect I've made, I did on my own. Because mm. I book my own show still. I never let mm. anybody book, book, book for me. If you get to see on this show, it came from me. <laughs> Nobody got them, but my, but but I did that. So it's like having to try to break down and prove yourself to people all the time, and still put out good content, even knowing that there are some limitations due to how schools operate, how teams operate right. for is access to their to their players and, and coaches. Right. Though I've right. accomplished all this, knowing there's still big old obstacles out there. Because you can see, right. I'm independently owned. I'm not mm. backed by ESPN, Yahoo, Disney, Barstool Sports. I'm not backed by a mainstream conglomerate. It's just JR. Right. 
So right. I have to fight for everything I get outside of my employer. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> any team I deal with, any cause I deal with, I have to fight for that. I had to fight to get in the Final Four with the, with the NCAA people. They want to do it. I said, so right. nobody in the interviews as many coaches as I do. I know that on, on every every week basis. Look at my work. Right. And knowing I put out quality work, and then I said, well, he has a point there. Right. You know. Oh, he's had it on. Look at his body of work. You can't argue with that. <laughs> you know, so, and this is with me getting shut down by the schools in their power five. Right. Because I'm going to show you an example. SEC and the Peach Bowl one time told me, well, we don't see that you have any coaches on your show. It wasn't because I didn't try. I had receipts. Right. Every school, either a no response or, mm. a, or, or an excuse. So how can I how can I have content and cover the school when I'm trying they don't let me? Then they had to say, right. okay, we'll approve your credential now. Because it ain't my fault. I reach right. out to every school every year. And I have receipts. Right. You say Tom is all too busy, he's too busy. Okay. Coach K can't do this, he can't. Okay, who? Cool. It's my record. I tried. Right. ACL was trying to tell me you didn't try. I did. What would you say to what would you say to uh we'll, we'll take turns. I'll get one more and then I'll let you get the questions back. What would you say to why is to what what makes you do what you do, the passion that you have? Obviously, you work with the Hawks, but you also have your own show. What what's the why to be in media for you? It's what I'm born to do. I, mm-hmm. Like if you if you, if you know what my real life like be. I'm very anti-social into myself, which is which some of you wouldn't believe. Right. It's hard but, it's, to believe. but it's true. But when I get on the microphone, I open up, I can be engaging, entertaining, electrifying, you know. I can give you some knowledge to help. Right. You know, and I, I'm good at this. I can impact people, lead people. I can yep. give them, you know, some some a, a vitamin help them mentally and physically and spiritually and emotionally. Uh, right. I, I, I'm very, what well, I would say, I have range. I can go from religion, politics, finance, credit repair, sports, entertainment, comedians. I can interview right. anybody from any right. background. I'm not, I have range. Some people only have one thing they can they, they, they do. I, I can't talk Man. about hockey or Preach. soccer or Preach. I can go from religion to comedy, <laughs> right? To an influencer or Instagram model, if I want to do that, I can use me back to that. You know, I, I have range, so right. I know I can impact people. I have a platform, I have a voice. Um, that's why I do what I do. Um, right. And plus, it uh, pays the bills well. And I don't want to have a real job. Yeah, hey, <laughs> not a real job if you love what you do. Yeah, so. I don't want to punch up by the time clock, so this is good money and good thing to do, cover sports for a living and also be able to talk to comedians, musicians, actors, you know, doctors even about certain things as well. So network I've built from this grassroots thing I did started 2012. It's it's one of it's, it's amazing to know what I've accomplished. Still knowing there's things out there that's the bumps in the road that I can't overcome because of it's not even my fault, it's just because People are stuck in their ways. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to. If you ain't backed by a corporately backed entity, you're not important to them, which right. is unfortunate. But it's just it's true though. Well, you're still killing it. You're still killing. It. All right, I got I got my couple questions in. I got, I can I can get the mic back. Yeah, you 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 came in there and did that, brother. I see you. Yeah, you had to, man. Had to. It's only it's only right, man. We gotta have some fun with this thing, man. You know nah, I mean? nah, no doubt, no doubt. So let me ask you, my brother. So for you, being in, being in this media space, how are you enjoying it? Uh, I love it. I love it. You know what I mean? I I really do. I think um, again, the perspective we you have a different perspective because you play at a high level, and you have a an eye from that vantage point, and then you had a father who was a coach. So that that's the basis of your your perspective, right? So you appreciate coaches differently because your father's a coach. You grew up with a coach in your home. So your your relation, the way you deal with coaches, and part of the reason why you have the guests you do, and part of the reason why you have the rapport you do, is because you're not a traditional media member that's looking to find 
all of the things that they're not doing right. At least your guess, anyway. Um, now, those that are not your guests, I can't speak for. But uh, I think that it, it all is about our perspective, right? So my perspective, I play college athletics, but I also coach for almost 20 years. So there's so many things that when you've sat in that seat and you know that your livelihood is dependent on this, that you have a different approach. So the coolest part for me is not only doing the interview part and the podcasting and connecting with rising and coaches and doing all the DEI stuff that we do, um, but it's also I got to be at a broadcast last year. So that just kind of gave me a different kind of a voice to be able to speak live on games, to be able to represent. Again, you're influencing the minds of any viewer that's watching. You may be on a broadcast that has 10 viewers that day. You may be on one that's 10,000 that day. You don't know all the time, but I was at high enough levels to whether it's a high level or low level. I know I get to take the time to put into my craft to learn about these teams and what they are trying to do and not just what I think they should do. There's a moment in time where I can offer that, but I think respecting the game is so important to me and being able to have a, give a voice to the voiceless. There's a lot of people out there that uh, are doing great things that are not going to be able to be on ESPN. So how can they get some press for what they're doing? Right. Which is similar to what you do. So I think that part has been dope. And then, um, being able to be an advocate for sometimes things that's right, talking to other media members, like, you know, having real conversations and giving them perspective. If they've never played, never coached, and they've just sat behind a computer screen or behind a pen, it's hard sometimes for them to relate. So being able to connect and give that other perspective has been powerful. And then, uh, like I said, being on air where you can be at it. Um, like we had a game last year where a coach got kicked out five minutes into the game. And – I think for me, I would want to represent that coach's program the best way we can, even though he's not coaching. You could easily just throw him under the bus. You know what I mean? You see people do that a lot. And I think there was a guy criticized last year. I won't get into any names. It was an NCAA tournament team. There was a team that almost upset a bigger team. Um, and this coach was super critical of one of the coaches, the underdog coach that almost won this game against a number one seed. And the analyst was very critical. And a lot of people had things to say. And I think there's just an element of like, we have our personal opinion and we have to do our best to kind of take that out of it when it comes to the job that they're doing, especially if they're outmatched or out, you know what I mean? So I think there's just, there's just a relatability, I guess I could say that try to represent that, but then still, still speak truth. So if somebody's not getting something done, you can speak on that. But I think there's just a way that you can do it where it's not like – because now when you say that, everybody else thinking like, oh, well, he's not doing a good job. It's like, well, wait a minute. Is he not doing a good job? Or are they just – had you know what I mean? Was it that play? Or was it – are they exceeding expectations, but they just couldn't quite pull off this upset against a team they weren't supposed to beat anyway? So, uh, but no, I love it. It's a, it's a long-winded answer, but uh, I love every single aspect of it too because you get to learn – the stories and help tell the stories again that a lot of people aren't telling. I think that's my favorite part about it. I was at the low and mid major Juco D2 uh, did the highest level too, but you know, the highest level, everybody wants to cover them. Everybody wants to cover the NBA, the Atlanta Hawks. If you're in Atlanta, everybody wants to cover the LA Lakers, you know, what about, you know, uh, Pepperdine, <laughs> you know what I mean? What about the UC, um, uh, Cal State Fullertons and the UC Riverside, who I've already spoken of, and the Texas AM Commerce. So yeah, I'm I'm loving every minute of it. The cool one cool part too, and, and you experience this even more than I do. But your guests that come on, like we had a ton of mid-major coaches on last year that are now all high major coaches. So you see all these guys that before they were they made it, quote unquote. They were the at a is they, they remember who you are after they move up. That's yeah. Because yeah, I have a few of them this year who moved up. Who I can't find no I more. Forgot. <laughs> I ain't going to say no surprised. names, but a nah, few, few, few of them have a forgotten your boy already. <laughs> you, but you but you already got receipts, though. You already got receipts. Hey, I said, okay, I, I see how it's going to work for you. You know? Yeah. And we and we keep we keep notes. But uh, but it's still cool to be a part of that before they got to that place. You know what I mean? Whether you're oh, yes. you become a head coach or whatever, you still got that. Uh, experience so I, i'm definitely loving it and i appreciate your connection and help and 
perspective that you share continually. There's not a lot of us in this space. So I appreciate who you've been and what you've done for me. No doubt. And I'll tell you something like on the Atlanta Hawks side or the Falcon side, I've been on the Patriots side. You have to, when, 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 when you're on their space, you have to kind of make it just about the game at hand. You can't give your opinion. Right. Now, in this space, I give my right. opinion. I See, that's just, right. I love this space because I have written in my contracts with anybody I deal with, you can't tell me what I can say on when I when I can't say on my, on my show. That's best between me right. and my show, not you. And I'm on your spaces, Falcons, right. Hawks, Braves, Pacers, Grizzlies, whoever I've dealt with in, in the past on basis. I'll give you the game without my opinion. I, I do my interviews, give ask my questions, and without opinion. That's right. the thing where you, when, you, when you're on a beat roll, you have to maintain relationship with the team. You can't give your opinion. Right. You have to kind of just keep it to what it is. Let the coach yeah. or player fill in the blanks, not you. Now, on this space, I can give my thoughts on what I saw. Real thoughts and not have yeah, to worry you kinda, about you kind of get the best of you kind of get the best of both worlds. And I'm I think I'm in a similar space, not exactly, but similar space where we get to give kind of that a lot more buttoned up version, and then you get a chance to have the kind of a little more uncut and freestyle because the same on all access. We own and get to have on who we want to have on and get to do it the way we want to do it. So I think there's some beauty in in having both sides. And it also gives more credibility though too to us in these spaces to be able to say, hey, he also works for Atlanta Hawks. Hey, he also does broadcasting with ESPN and in the Mountain West and all those things. It just it just helps to build that credibility, which I think is important. And show, like you said, that range of I'm not just in this one box. You know, we can do more things than just this one. Yeah, I've covered tennis. tennis. I've done golf. I did racing one time. You're more, you're more versatile than me than that. I did I did racing one time. I saw I saw them Confederate flags in Hampton, Georgia at the raceway in Atlanta. Right. You're like, um, I'm out. The Black Panther son in me came back, but that's Black Panther. I didn't say that. He, he's a Black Panther. So some of a Black I'm Panther ca- came out of me. <laughs> so uh-uh, ain't doing that. I've covered a, a bowling events in town, G League, the Dream, soccer. That's more of the the, the international team in town, the Braves. The, right. So I've done some range of sports. I've done political campaigns. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> I've done concerts, you know, yeah. so having that range of what I've covered. So nobody can ever tell me, well, JR, you haven't covered this. I have. So, so now, 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 why you don't want to let me in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so right. I was like, so receipt, receipt. And also, always, anybody listening out here that's young, young media, always save your credentials, always save your email confirmations from events you cover. They come and hand you down the road. Mm. Somebody wants to doubt who you are, doubt. Okay, well, look, I've covered this. <laughs> I think so. there's got to be a space for you now, though, too, though, where you feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, everybody has a different kind of energy on this, but you you know what you've accomplished, so you don't, even though you do have to prove to some people that don't know you, and I shouldn't say have to prove, you have to show them, uh, or you choose to show them, like, hey, by the way, um, there's got to be a sense of accomplishment too to know, like, not that I've arrived in this space, but I am a, I am, I've made my place in this space. Is that fair to say? I really never think that way. So I'm always having to fight. Like it's always like the big events: U.S. Open tennis tournament, the oh, yeah. the the, the cost football playoff. It's always a struggle and a fight because, mm-hmm. like, the Utah Jazz. So I'm gonna call them out. Mike Conley, somebody I know, friends with him, got mad because I had him on my show, and I didn't go through them. You, 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 you didn't email me. You didn't answer my emails. So I texted the man who I knew personally from Memphis. Mm. So it's like they people get mad when you go around them, but you, you, if you on the front end, you act right on the front end and ask you, like, hey, blah blah blah, it wouldn't happen that way. Right. So for me, it's always about the fight. There's mm. there's people like me. Into the independent black media, independent media, period, trying to get more content, 
how can you grow if you don't give them a chance, chance to grow? Right. That's my thing. If you, you people want to grow, you hey, give them a chance to interview maybe a fifth the bench a, a bench warmer. Give them a chance before they give them somebody bigger. Right. I go yeah, like, yeah. The, like the Warriors let me talk to some people and they oh JR's cool. We'll give him a higher uh, guy more in the rotation. And right. I start off with bench warmers, G League guys, and they saw he does good work. At least give us a chance. Right. Yeah, I think there's always a sense of a fight, though. I, so I guess there's a part where, yes, what you say makes perfect sense on one end because you're always fighting for more. We're not satisfied or settled into, oh, I've just done this. But there is a sense of even though we're fighting to get more and fighting to accomplish more and cover more and shine more light and do more God's work, there's also the sense of, like, I'm here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm here. You here. It's a fact. It's proven fact. The receipts speak for themselves. So if you're not going to celebrate it, which you do, but I'm going to celebrate it here. You're here. You have you have arrived. You're making waves in this space. You're going to continue to make more. But I want to make sure we celebrate that, too, because it's too important because it is. It does look easy from the outside. And those that don't know, don't know how hard that fight is. But at the same time, as you're fighting, you have major space. Yeah, I fight every day, brother, for, for black media every day. Because if you heard my phone beep there, I got an email from a team right now. <laughs> you know, so it's <laughs> like, we all have to email him back and tell him, like, nah, we ain't doing this. It's saying, is it that? Nah, it ain't happening. <laughs> so, <laughs> go tell me. Like, uh, you know, he, yeah, he said he, he something crazy. It's right now. So, yeah, but that's every day, brothers. Every day it's a fight with these professional teams, college teams, every day. Like the U.S. Open, whatever you covered, but, but you have, but you have made your but you have made your space, and I think you said thank you. I don't know if I heard that. I think you did. Oh yeah, we celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. Yeah, this space is a, a pure space, brothers. I call it a clean glass of water. Yeah, <laughs> it's a purified space. There's no bias here, no narrative here. It's just we chatting, we having a real right. conversation. And brother, yeah. before you go, I want to do tell you this, man. I got three, 50 minutes to go before you got to get out of here. I appreciate yeah. you so much. I really do, and I mean that. Because you you actually understand me, which is very rare for you to understand me, for real. <laughs> you actually understand me. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's rare. But if you actually get me and understand what I'm about, and you see that I'm trying yeah. to make a difference out here in the world, and, you know, for as intense as I can be on sidelines and things of that nature, I'm a pretty good guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, no, doubt, no doubt. We all have an intense side. Uh, yeah. No, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm just excited to be able to. Uh, again, this is my third time on. Uh, family of the show and family of yourself, and uh, it's just happened very organically. To be honest, I, I actually to give you kudos, I actually reached out to you. I think one day, if I'm not mistaken, this you is did. How it started. I reached out, was was interested. I think you had DJ Taylor on, somebody I knew, and I saw you had some head coaches on. I'm like, man, this brother's out here doing it. I've never seen this kind of thing. So I uh, reached out. We, we hit it off from the jump and been been right on his wave ever since, and you've been nothing but supportive. And I think the part that is so cool is, you know, again, we work together as far as, like, helping with different contacts or different, you know, we, we're helping each other. It's not this crab-in-a-bucket mentality, but I think the part I love is that, you've created this space where people can kind of let their hair down and just be themselves, which a lot of times coaches and media don't really get to do that. And the the better ones can put it on the show and, and kind of turn it on. But people kind of know that they can have a relaxed couch lounge type of vibe and still talk sports and still talk whatever. But I think you've created that amongst the, the coaching community period, people that I've talked to that I've connected you to, or that we've had a mutual contact and maybe, this person told me about their, their experience. Um, yeah, I just think that's that's it should be celebrated because that's important for coaches to be able to have that space. So salute you on that. Keep going. It only gets better. No doubt, my brother. We'll just get real soon, my guy, and be safe out there as it gets colder. And uh, when, when I come to Denver, hopefully I catch you when I come to Denver, man, when we come out that way. Yeah, let's do it. We'll make it happen. <laughs> no doubt, you, you folks. Might have, to wear your, might, might have to wear your hoodie, too. It might be cold. I'll have one on, trust me, and some uh, long john underneath my brother. I don't do cold very well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, appreciate it again, man. 
No doubt, folks. It's Brian Burton, Uprise Athletics, all his all his network, rising coaches. He does a lot of stuff. Broadcast ESPN. Check him out. Coach Burton thirteen on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff, folks. Jr. Brian Burton. We out. <laughs>